Hallelujah. 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 Hey! Hallelujah. 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 Devils be cast off. Unclean spirits be released. Hallelujah. Be cast off now. Return no more in the name of Jesus. Healing flow. Favor flow. Favor flow. Hallelujah. 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 Lay hands in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, lay on the sick and they shall recover. Somebody shall recover. 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 Hallelujah. Come on, get your children on your mind. Come on, get your loved one on your mind. Come on, get them in your imaginations right now. Think on them. Think on them hard. You may be pissed with them, but think on them hard. Hallelujah. You may be angry with them. Come on, but think on them hard. Look beyond your feelings. Come on, do like God. Look beyond the fault. See the need. And just begin to say, restored. Restored. Come on, shout restored in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're restored in Jesus' name. I see you. You're restored in Jesus' name. 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 Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let some praise in this house. Come on, let some praise in this house. Hallelujah. Healing. Restoration. Power. Hallelujah. 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 It anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. I will dwell in the presence of the Lord. I will be where he is. I will. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for healing now. Thank you for salvation. We thank you for restoration. Father, right now, you said lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Father, I thank you for recovering now of every hand, oh God. Oh God, right now, these hand, your hands have anointed. Hallelujah. They're recovered. They're restored. In Jesus' name. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Somebody shout amen. Put them hands together one time. Hallelujah. 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 Just take turns and just look at somebody and say, be restored. Be restored. Be restored. Be restored. Come on. In your imagination, in your mind, in your heart, be restored. Be restored. Be restored. Be restored. Be restored. Hallelujah. Take your seats if you will. Glory to the name of Jesus. Good morning, everybody. Praise that we thank God for the name of Jesus. We thank God for the living word. I give him praise and I give him honor today for his presence. We thank God for, thank God for all those who are streaming live. Welcome to Transformation Church Live. Amen. We want you to go with me very quickly. I want to launch off from Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, verse number 25. Joel chapter number 2. Verse number 25, and then I will come back to that, but I want to talk to you um, concerning God is restoring. God is restoring. Watch this. Even if you feel like death is not a restoration, I don't care how you cut it, God is restoring. Because if this earthly tabernacle be dissolved, I have a new one, not made with hands in the heavenlies. I am restored. Amen. Praise the Lord. I once was lost, but now I'm found. He has restored me. Anybody glad about it? Sometimes we've been so far out there inside on the backside of the desert, we forgot how to praise him. 
we forgot how to give him glory. We've been, watch this, we've been trenched sometimes in our stuff, including I've been trenched and trenched sometimes in the cares of life that sometimes we forget to praise him at all times. That's why I have to remind myself, D. That's why I have to remind myself, saints, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Praise him. My humanity will fuss, but my spirit will praise him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I can't believe this. Bless the Lord. The Lord is good. Because when I think of his goodness and all that he has done for me, eventually my soul will cry out when I think of his goodness and when I imagine his goodness. Can I tell you something? When you begin to think on something long enough, it will move your emotions. It will move your body. Come on. You, you can think on something that happened to you days before and it could make you mad all over again. Because you thought on it. Can I get a witness? In the natural, in the natural. If I think on the goodness of Jesus. I didn't mess up. In the natural, also in the natural. When I think of goodness of God in the natural. And all that he's done. Eventually my soul will say, Lord, thank you. I become ashamed of myself. The Lord has just been too good. I ain't have everything I wanted. But I do have what I need. Can I get a witness? I have what I need, but I still need more. I want to keep it 100 with somebody. He has supplied my needs, but sometimes there's some needs that I want more of. Y'all too cute to say amen. Praise him. I'm glad for what I have, but praise the Lord. If you're honest, I just need a little bit more. Can I get a witness? Amen. Because we talk about he's a God of more than enough. So praise the Lord, I'm desiring in him, I'm praising in him that he's a God who is restoring. God is restoring. I told you this is the year of remnant restoration. He's restoring even in the middle of some of the chaos and confusion, the wars and the rumors of wars, um, the, the tragedies, he's restoring. That's why he tells you, watch this, when you see these things, stand in a holy place, be where he is, desire him, because he is our protection, he is our grace, let the church shout amen, amen. I want to read with you, you can see, praise the Lord, Joel chapter number two, verse number 25, and I will restore to you the years. That the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the pommel worm, my great army, which I sent among you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And I will restore to you the years that the church say amen. God is restoring. God is restoring. I, I want to speak prophetically that some of the tragedies we're facing, some of the heartache we're facing uh, in our not natural, in our personal lives. I'm believing that God is working all things together for the good of them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. Which means even though it's hurting, even though it seems disastrous, even though it feels like I'm not going to make it, and sometimes even, even questioning where God is, yet he's restoring. Because in order to restore something, you have to tear some things off. You have to tear some of the old things down. We have to repair some of the things that are broken, some of the things that, watch this, that are worn out. And God is restoring he's restoring the church he's restoring the local church how you've seen it before we're trying to keep that context but god is looking for true worshipers god is looking for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth amen so in the scriptures from genesis to revelations there is a theme of restoration that runs as a thread through the scriptures if we look at Genesis chapter 1 all the way to Revelations 21 and 1, Revelation chapter, Genesis, excuse me, chapter 1, verses 2 and 3 says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, 
let there be light. Which means he looks over chaos, he looks over a void, he looks over darkness, and he begins to speak. I come to tell you that even if you're facing darkness in your life, God is restoring the light. Even if there's a void in your heart, God is restoring the space, watch this, or restoring the love. If there seems to be some depthness in you, some pain in you, some emptiness in you, God is the filler of your joy. In Genesis, he speaks to the void. He speaks to the emptiness. He speaks to the darkness. He restores. In Revelation 21 and 1, he said, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. Which means the earth that we're traversing now, the earth that we're feeling, I'm dealing with now, will pass away. And he's restoring. The Bible says, watch this, that heaven and earth will pass away, watch this, with a consuming fire, and he will restore all things. God is restoring. And through the trials and the tribulations of your life, through the trials and the testings in your life, we have a promise that that he's restoring. Restoration will come. Can y'all hear me today? Restoration will come. Don't give up. Doesn't matter how old you are. Doesn't matter how long you've been walking. Doesn't matter how long you've been trusting him. Keep on trusting. Keep on walking. Keep on living. Keep on believing. Don't let go. There are scriptures that happen concerning restoration from Genesis to Revelation, but yet there's scriptures in between where we live. He reminds us, if you go back to Joel chapter 2, verse number 23, he says, be glad then. Be glad, saints of God. Be glad, which means I have a responsibility to be glad. I have a responsibility of my gladness. Many times we're looking for things in the earth that will make us glad. But we have to begin to look internally where God is. We have to begin to seek him, begin to seek his love and his peace. Watch this. And walk in the gladness that he loves me. Walk in the gladness that he saved me. Walk in the gladness that I'm still here. You'll hear me saying this all year long for the last couple of years. No matter what you're traversing, no matter what you're going through, you can give him praise that I'm still standing. Uh, I still have a chance. Uh, I still have an opportunity to give him praise. Uh, I can lift up my voice and say, thank you, Jesus, uh, for you are good uh, and your mercy endures forever. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm coming to tell you when you're going through, don't keep your mouth shut. I ain't talking about fussing on it. I'm talking about praise him. Sometimes you got to praise your adversary over. You got to praise your circumstance through. You got to give God praise while you're angry. Give him praise while you're sick. Give him praise while you're recovering. Give him praise when you're down. Give him praise when you're up. Give him praise when I had enough. Give him praise when there's not more than enough. I'm going to bless him at all times. I want to give my God some praise because in my praise is restoration. In my praise is a sound of creation. Let there be somebody say let Let there be be. hallelujah i come to tell let there be joy in my heart let there be peace in my mind let there be joy in my home let there be peace in my soul let it be hallelujah maybe i want to tag that let it be hallelujah in two forms when i'm in my joy don't touch it Leave it right where it is. Can I get a witness? When I'm going through, I'm going to uncover my joy. Praise the Lord. And when the joy is flowing, don't try to stop me. Just let it be. When my cup is running over, I don't need you to slow me down. Let it flow. Let it be. Let the joy flow like a river. Hallelujah. Many times when we're getting excited and we're having a moment in the Lord, praise the Lord, sometimes folks want to rush you through a knot. Just let it be. Can I get a witness? He says, be glad, Joel 2.23. Then, you children of Zion. Hello, children of Zion. Because what the prophet is saying to children of Israel, he's saying to Zion. And Zion are the people of God, present and future. 
the people of Zion or the people of Christ of the tribe of Judah where Jesus comes from the seed of Abraham which basically says when he's talking to them because of Jesus you're talking to me so I come to tell you don't you feel belittled don't you feel less than what he promised them belongs to me can I get a witness listen when you've been adopted you're not outsider you're an insider when you've been adopted, you don't have another mommy and daddy. That's your mama and daddy. When we really conceive adoption, you take on every right, every responsibility. Here's what happens supernaturally. When you're adopted in the body of Christ, you even take on the DNA. And when somebody wants to check to see who your daddy is, my father God is. And you can't tell me any difference. Check my blood. Because the only blood in me is the blood of Jesus. Can I get a witness? So children of Zion, be glad and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former, watch this, rain moderately, and he will cause to come down from you, for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain the first month. That latter rain, watch this, is talking about the Holy Ghost, the presence of God in Christ Jesus, which means we ought to rejoice. We ought to be glad because God, watch this, is sending the former and the latter rain that what he did for them, he will do for me. If he, watch this, if he healed them in the wilderness, he can heal me right now. If he fed them in the wilderness, he can feed me right now. If he gave me victory over the adversary in the wilderness he can give me victory right now somebody shout victory I have victory right now I have victory through my praise I have victory in my praise I'm not gonna let my praise go no longer sometime when you leave here you leave your praise in the pew but you need to take your praise with you you need to bring your praise when you get up you need to bring your praise when you're on the toilet you need to bring your praise when you're in the shower you ought to have your praise when you get in the car you ought to have a praise when you come in the building i shouldn't have to pump you up but i'm gonna bless him i'm gonna praise him because he's restored my praise he's restored his glory he's restoring my soul hallelujah can I get a witness? I have the rain in my life. Holy Ghost is raining on me. Holy Ghost is raining in me. Holy Ghost is raining over my life. Holy Ghost is flowing in me. I come to tell you he's like a spring of living water. This shall not be quenched. This shall not be captured. I'm flowing in him. God is restoring. Don't fight the Holy Ghost. Don't fight the power of God. Stop worrying about being cute or denomination. That's not how we do it. Let's do it how the Bible say. If you realize, let's just, anybody who is a, as a theologian has to study history. And what I'm noticing is that what's happening now happened in the 1900s. There was a serious fever and pandemic in the 1900s. And the church was looking for identity again in the 1900s. And the church was looking for identification, meaning let's remove all the things that divide us and let's just serve God through the scriptures. But I come to tell you that same mode is moving where God is looking for true worshipers who's not just identifying with their own agenda, but we're identifying with the agenda of God. That men will be saved, that men will be born again, that will be filled with the Holy Ghost, that we're loving one another, helping the poor, feeding the needy, watch this, and declaring the glory of God in the land of the living. He said, I will restore that with the canker worms, that what the locusts have eaten. I come to tell you, whatever you have suffered loss, no matter why you have suffered it, God said, I'm restoring the things that you need. I'm restoring the things that I gave to you. I'm restoring the promise that I've given to you. Hallelujah. He's restoring it. Watch this. Even David, not only Joel, but David. David in Psalms 51 and 10, David, after he went into Bathsheba and he sinned against God and prophet Nathan came and gave him a scenario. And then prophet Nathan said, that man is you. When we begin to accept our sin 
accept our fault in the matter. We spend too much time wondering what's wrong with somebody else. I just need to examine myself to see what's wrong with me. Then, Deke, when I can fix myself, I don't have to blame you. I can just look at myself and say, oh, my slip is not falling. I'm good today. He says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Somebody say restoration. Create in me, he says. Watch this. And when David says create, he's talking about not that he doesn't have a heart, but he said the heart I have is not working. I need you to create. I need you to make a new one you can use. I need you to make one in me that you can live in. I need, Lord, you to make me one that will be pleasing to you. And when you create in me a clean heart, then renew a right spirit. Because if I have the right spirit, then my heart will be right. Because my heart is my will. My heart is my emotions. My heart is my life and if Christ is in me the hope of glory I can live for him can I get a witness create in me a clean heart renew a right spirit within me cast me not away from your presence the church has grown cold where they don't even not even concerned about the very presence of God how because when you I said this before because when we're conscious of presence of authority we check ourselves. Am I right? Some people say, no, I'm just the same always. No, no, you lying. You try hard to be, but you feel it when, the, watch this, when authority shows up, you change. Mm -hmm. You don't do the same things in the house when mama's here versus mama not there. Can I talk to some real people? Because you may, as soon as they say that's enough, in the right tone. See, you can say that's enough in different ways. You can say that's enough like that's preparing you for you to decide on your own to stop. Then there's another that's enough with a different tone that says, I'm warning you. If you're not going to do it yourself, I'm going to do it. And then when they go from that's enough and say that's it, it's a whole different vibe. So what I'm telling you is when you create the presence of God, then the things watch this, that we slide on, we become conscious of it, then we begin to work on it. Am I right? He's telling, restore unto me, verse 12, the joy of my salvation. Saints of God, let's restore the joy in being saved. Let's be glad again about being saved. Let's be glad about not being ashamed to say that I'm saved. Let's be glad about, watch this, I'm saved. That's why I don't do this or that because I'm saved because I love God. It's not, watch this, and you're liberated because not about what I can't do. I don't do that because I'm in love. Come on, y'all. When you love her in love and you change positions. Girl, I'll talk to you later. I'm going to talk to some grown folk. Hallelujah. Amen. Yo, bro, come on, you hanging out? Nah, man, not today. Amen. Oh, you hand-pecked. Yeah, brother, I'm pecked by the right hand, so just keep it moving, brother. Hey, I've learned to have answers for all of the things they tell me. Oh, man, you a chum, you the... But you ain't messing with it. Amen. Amen. I thought you were this or that. Well, you don't get to determine what I am. I'm like, who are you? Are you saved? I don't believe it. Then you can't tell me. How you want to tell me what's in my father's house? You're not in it yet. Oh, man, come on with that. Go on with yourself. Come on. I'm trying to get some warriors up in here. Watch this. That love God. Watch this. Who are harmless as, watch this wise as serpents and harmless as doves, which means I have the capacity to strike you if I need to, but I ain't interested in it. Can I get a witness? Just like a parent who would chastise you and love you the moment after. Can I get a witness up in here? Amen. Chastise you still have breakfast on the table. Chastise you and lunch is still in the lunchbox. 
chastise you, but breakfast food is still on the table. Amen. Restore unto me the joy of my sal thy salvation, thy salvation, thy salvation. Restore unto me your salvation, thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. This is David who was seeking restoration from God after he has sinned against him. He said, against you, O Lord, have I sinned. And he's crying out for restoration. Restore me. When God comes into your heart, into your life, and even though we watch this, uh, we're not perfect, but we're being perfected. So there's three statements that I want to bring to you very succinctly for us to examine ourselves with. First of all, number one, don't allow the devil to persuade you to pervert your future. Don't allow the devil to persuade you to pervert your future. Don't you allow the devil to persuade you to pervert your future, to change it, to move you out of direction, to change your mind. Are you with me? Because number one, we're, create, we're commanded to love God. We're commanded to love God. And the enemy, I'm going to show this, the enemy is coming to try to get some of that love. We are commanded to love God from Genesis to Revelations, even Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse number 5. Deuteronomy chapter number 6, verse number 5. He said, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And in the Old Testament, it's not under the law only, but that same sentiment goes in the synoptic gospels. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, John say the same exact thing. And if you looked at Matthew, just Matthew 22, 37 and 8 by itself, see, Jesus said unto them, so if you didn't believe Moshe, if you didn't believe Moses, if you didn't believe the Bible, I mean, the writer of the Pentateuch, of Deuteronomy, where he says, God says, love me with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. Jesus picks it up in Matthew 22 and 37 and 38 and says, Jesus says unto him, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. For this is the first and great commandment, which means God hasn't changed. He's requiring his own to love him. We must restore the love. Not only restore relationship, restore presence, but restore love. And we're required not to allow the enemy to pervert the love of God in our heart, to change the love of God in our heart. Watch this. When he says heart, he means your life. You watch this, your emotion, your will. When he says your soul, it's talking about how you think, how you feel, how you respond. When he talks about your might or your mind, Deke, he's talking about the things that we do. So I have to love him from my heart. I have to love him in my mind. I have to love him in the things that I do. Can I get a witness? Because when you love somebody, you're thinking about them. When you love somebody, it moves you to do something. How many of you go to a store? Even men, they may think we ain't romantic, but watch this. Even men, when they see something with the one they love, they be like, oh, man, I think she like that. I ain't buy it yet, but I'm thinking about it. It's on my mind. Am I right? Or watch this. She may not have even asked. I just started imagining some things that would make her smile. Didn't ask for anything. I'm doing it. Why? Because you're thinking about it. And when you're thinking about it, it moves you to an action. How can you love God, but you don't ever want to be where he is? How can you love God, but you're never thinking about him? How can you love God, but you have no gifts, no anniversaries, no presentations? How can you love him? Soon as a person in relationship sees that long enough, they'll be like, you don't love me. They start asking the significant question. Do you love me? Well, wrong opening. Am I right? Even if you have to muster, yes. Even Jesus, when he asked his disciples, asked Peter, do you love me? 
Loveth thou me? He said, yea, Lord. Jesus said, then feed my sheep. Loveth thou me? He said it enough times where Peter got annoyed. Well, you already know whether I love you or not. So what I'm saying to you, we have to restore the love. God is calling us to love him. God is calling us to restore the love of our hearts, the love of our minds, the love of our actions, which is our strength. We have to begin to do things because I love him. Watch this. And when you love folk, doesn't mean it's always on a mountaintop. I love him when it's good. I'm loving him when it's bad. I'm loving it when it's quiet. I'm loving when it's loud. I'm loving it when it's party time. I'm loving it when it's war time. But love ain't changed. Number one, don't allow the enemy to pervert your future. Number two, Satan is always bringing us into a trap of curiosity. Don't allow Satan to bring you into the trap of curiosity. He can bring thoughts, all right, to your imagination and then humanize them. Because the enemy has no power. He has suggestion. The only power that the enemy may have is me, myself. Because he cannot make you, but it can always suggest according to how I feel about a thing. Come on, y'all. Are we honest with ourselves? Watch this. Curiosity is what caused Eve to pick the fruit off the tree. Curiosity is saying, oh, it's good for fruit. Really? Even when you know he said not to touch it. Once the word said, watch this, once the voice said that was humanized, listen to me, the devil says it, but he's not just a voice. He humanizes himself in a serpent. Y'all read your Bible. It says the serpent was the most cunning beast. What that means is he gets into something that's familiar. He gets into something that you identify with and not afraid of. Then he starts spreading his words. That's why you have to be able to hear God for yourself. Don't allow him to trap you with curiosity. When you know what God has said, erase curiosity. Curiosity got me in trouble. What's that cord? Don't pull that cord. There's an iron right there. You pull that cord, that iron come and put a burn on me that lasts till the day. Don't touch that. Curiosity, you know the old saying, cliche, curiosity killed the cat. But satisfaction brought it back. So they, t they hit me with that. Well, satisfaction brought it back. Well, sometimes you can't come all the way back by yourself. That's a witness. Come on, saints of God. Let's, let's look at our humanity. Sometimes I wish I was still young so I could do some of the things I want to do. You can. You just can't do it as fast. And you don't recover as fast. Can I get a witness? Amen. When somebody says, let's sprint across the street 20 years ago, you wouldn't mind doing that. 30 years later, let's just walk. Well, you mean you can't? I can. I just don't want to because things hurt. Amen. Youthful things go away. You don't get them back. So don't waste your youth. He says, watch this. Love God in your youth. Hear me, enemy wants to humanize something because he, watch this, he's saying to you and I, he brings thoughts, imaginations, and then he humanizes them in voices that we're familiar, in faces that we're familiar with. That's why Paul says, cast down imaginations, watch this, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So the knowledge is not necessarily a, a person, knowledge is a thing or a state of being, but watch this. So when he's saying cast down knowledge is where the enemy taps into our mind, begins to talk to us with some real stuff. Then we begin to devise some things with curiosity. Then we start responding. You know how child it is where somebody can tell you a thing about somebody. You ain't never seen it. They never done it to you. But you start responding to that person because of what somebody else says. And you don't even know whether it's true. So they made up their, they made up their mind for you. They gave you their mind. The enemy's trying to give his mind to you. Cast it down. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of what you know about God. I told you about the serpent. 
Snakes are not devils. It's just the vessel that he used to talk to her. Judas. Judas is what the enemy used in order to get to Christ. Are you with me? To, to betray him. Job's wife was not a devil. Job's wife was just the voice that the enemy used to get to Job. Job, why are you dealing with this? Job, why don't you curse God and die? No, that woman loved her husband. But watch this, seeing her husband going through th some things, the enemy gets in there and watch this. Uh, I'm trying to help you out. Why don't you just get your, put yourself out of this misery? No, you sound foolish. You don't sound like my wife. Are you with me? Which even Job knew that that didn't sound like her. Oh, somebody help me. Look at Peter, St. Peter. Peter, the same Peter that said, thou art the Christ, is the same Peter say, no, you're not going to die. You can't. And what did Jesus say? Get behind me, Satan. So was Peter Satan? Peter was just the vessel that the enemy used to say some words that was going against how Jesus felt. Can you all see that? And there's many times that the enemy can use human faces sometimes to say some things that can either lift you up or pull you down. We have been called to edify. So if you're not saying something that's going to edify, examine that thing. Because God has come to restore. God is in a restoring business. God is in a lifting and a building business. Can I get some help in the building? He said, watch this, in Deuteronomy 20, as I begin to move toward my seat, he, he said, but thou shalt utterly be destroyed, which means those voices, the, those adversaries that come against our mind to break down and not edify, he tells us to utterly destroy. Watch this, because in Deuteronomy 20, Moses, God gives to Moses the idea of what they're going to face when they get into the promise. So when you read Deuteronomy, and even chapter number 20, God tells Moses to tell the people, I've given you the land, but when you get there, there's some an enemies already there. And he says, the Hittites are there, and the Amorites are there, and the Canaanites are there, and the Persesites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites are there. Watch this. But the Bible said that God told them to tell them that when they get there, to start destroying them all. Which means the things that's hindering us, the things that's keeping restoration from not happening, the things that's slowing down the love of God and my desire for him, watch this, cannot be more important than my love and desire for God. Why should we begin to destroy all these type of people? Verse 18, that they teach you not to do after all their abominations, which they have done un unto their gods. Which means the reason he says I need you to be able to be destroy these people or what these people represent is because if you don't destroy that stuff that it represents, they're going to teach you to do the things that are contrary to me and it's going to destroy you. And that's what's happening in social media. That's what's happening in all these platforms. There's so much information everywhere and all the time that everybody gets to spit their ideology and you get to choose what you want to hear. Are you with me? Because all those ites in Deuteronomy 20 represents the challenging of your faith. We have family members that challenge faith. Are you with me? They know you saved. They know you love the Lord. But watch it. They would challenge your faith by reminding you of your past. They challenge your faith by reminding of what you did. They challenge your faith. Not only that, but then they want to add, the, add their belief to you. Have you ever noticed nobody wants Jesus, but they need you to accept their ideology? So here's a trigger to anyone. Anyway, I need you to hear me. They don't mind you serving Jesus. They don't mind you coming to church. Just add this to you. Take this with you. Y'all hear me clearly. So what happens is when they start adding their stuff, they begin to pervert the Christ that's in you. They start, watch this, you have faith in God. Now I want you to start adding these things. And here's the problem with the church, because we're trying to bring all the stuff in the world in here and trying to make Christ fit into him. When God is telling us to separate ourselves, pull these things off. So all the ites that he tells us to destroy 
all those ideologies, those imaginations, those old friends. It's not that you don't love them, but you can't add your life to Christ in me. Amen. I don't know about you. This ain't going to hurt you. A little bit won't hurt. I ain't going to tell nobody. Let me tell you what I learned. Folk who said they ain't going to tell nobody, tell somebody. The moment you have one upsetting break, all the bones, they start collecting. But I come to tell you, but when God restores you, when he makes you whole, you can look back and wonder how I made it over, that I'm still standing. He saved me and I'm in his righteousness. The glory of God is on my life. Watch this. And all those things, I'm, watch this. He said, lay aside every weight and every sin that so easily besets, which means my, every day in my life, I'm working on pulling off something, pulling off other things and causing the life of restoration continually work in my life every day. Am I by myself? Every day. All they want to do is add their gods to your God. It's just like the Bible. They didn't mind you bringing the Ark of the Covenant which represented the presence of God. Just put him over here with ours. Which means they're really trying to make you equal. They're trying to degrade you. They're trying to pull you down. Anytime you have standards, they're looking to bring your standards. Watch this. They're not looking to meet your standards. They're looking for you to bring you down to theirs. I've done it. Get there and say, man, you just even know better. What am I doing down here? Because when you've been born again and you know the love of God, you know where you fit. And down here ain't it. I see y'all leaving. Amen? They want to add their belief system to you. They want to make you feel less than. But in my close, here's what he says in Exodus 23 and 20. He said, I will send an angel before you. I'm going to send my word. I'm going to send my messenger before you. And he's going to keep you in the way and bring thee into a place which I have prepared. Beware of him, which means pay attention. Obey his voice. Provoke him not. For he will not pardon your transgressions. For my name, for my name, for my name is in him. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thy enemies and an adversary unto thine adversary. Don't you know God is fighting for you? Don't you know God is on your side? And anybody who's setting a standard against you, God is an enemy to your enemy. So while you're worrying about your enemy, watch this, you tell me, I got somebody, the Lord right now, who's mad with you for messing with me. Thank you, Jesus. He said, I'm going to be an adversary to those who are adverse to you. Which means while they're being adverse to you, they're being adverse to God. So I'm encouraging some believers today that as long as you're on God's side, he said, I'm an enemy to your enemy, an adversary to your adversary. I'm bringing you to a prepared place and I'm restoring you. First Peter 5 and 10 says, listen, that after you have suffered a while, we've been through some things. As long as we live, we're going to go through some things. But my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but I wholly lean on Jesus' name. He said, for the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore somebody shout restore restore not only will he restore you but he will confirm you not only will he confirm you but he will strengthen you and not only will he strengthen you but he will establish you and when god establishes you you will be like a tree 
planted by the rivers of water. It shall not be moved. And your leaves shall not wither. But it will give forth its fruit in this season. Be encouraged. God is restoring. God is building up. God is making you whole. God is strengthening you. God is providing. We all receive that in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your power and your presence. Thank you for your loving kindness. Lord, I thank you for being a restoring father. I thank you for all the provisions you have made for us. I honor you today, oh God, those things which have dried up and gone away. But I thank you for restoring your purpose, restoring your love, restoring your peace. Father, I thank you right now, Father, for being a guard over us from our enemies and from our adversaries. Now we set our mind on you. Father, right now, that we give no place to the devil. We thank you because you're almighty. You're all powerful. Father, there's none like you. You are the everlasting and strong God. You are the eternal light, the eternal cause. You're the one by which we live and move and have our being. So, Father, we, your people who are worshiping, O oh God, who are called by your name, Lord, we receive your favor. We receive your blessing. We thank you for restoration in these limbs. We thank you for restoration in our minds and in our hearts. We thank you for restoring now. And, Father, through that spiritual restoration, we thank you for emotional restoration. That weeping may endure for a night, but your joy will overflow in our morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, that even as you're strengthening in these bodies, which are living sacrifices unto you, that you will sustain us, that you will cause us to recover. I thank you for healing. I thank you for restoring. I thank you for saving. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen and amen. Come on, give him a praise in the house. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. It's offering time in the house.